Step 5. Quantum Challenges So in quantum communication, the signal is at the level of individual photons, which is very different to classical communication, where we are sending many, many photons. So the major problem becomes photon loss in the fiber. Classically, if we are communicating and we lose a single photon, this is a very insignificant. The whole signal propagates and it's still be, uh, we can still read it out at the output. However, when this happens in a quantum communication protocol and we lose a single photon, then the entire protocol fails. Go back to, for example, E91 or BB84, when a loss of a single uh, photon becomes a huge problem. So, how can we combat photon loss? We saw that it's possible classically. Let's think whether this is also possible in the quantum communication. So, amplification of a signal worked in classical communication. Can we do that for quantum signals as well? Namely, can we create backup, backup copies of the single photons such that if one, becomes, one gets lost, we can still use the backups in order to proceed with the protocol? And we can, but we are limiting ourselves to orthogonal states. If the states that we are sending are, for example, just qubits 0 and 1, 0 and 1, and so on, fine, we can do that and we can create backup copies. But in quantum communication, all the magic happens with non-orthogonal states. And often these states are entangled with some other qubits somewhere else. Therefore, uh, we have to be able to copy arbitrary states. And this is where we hit the roadblock that we have seen in previous lessons, which is the no cloning theorem. Okay, so amplification will not work in quantum communication. How about just sending the photon and hoping for the best? Let's do a very quick calculation that will demonstrate that this is not a very good strategy. So the probability that we transmit the photon through a fiber over distance uh, capital L, where the attenuation parameter in the fiber is alpha, is given by the following expression. It's 10 raised to the power of negative alpha times L divided by 10. So now let's plug in some numbers to give us some intuition of what this probability is. So we will consider a long fiber of 1000 kilometers, which we call long, but in the context of global communication is not that long. Uh, actually. And we will uh, assume a best case scenario where the fiber has ultra low attenuation of mere 0.1 decibels per kilometer. So the probability of that we are actually successfully transmit a single photon is given by 10 to the power of minus 10. So this looks like a very small number and indeed it is. But to give you some intuition of really how small it, this number is, Let's consider that we have a source that produces one photon every second. So every second we are sending a single photon down the fiber. How long do we need to wait in order for somebody that's at the end of this fiber, 1000 kilometers away, to actually successfully receive a single photon? Well, we have to wait on average 317 years. So you can see that even with ultra low fibers, over moderate distances, sending a single photon down the fiber is not a very good idea. And this is only one source of error that we have to contend with in long-distance quantum communication. Other sources of errors include unitary errors, such as Pauli errors, where we can randomly flip the state of our photons, or Z errors, where we introduce some phase to the photons, and then there is a whole bunch of non-unitary errors, such as decoherence, dephasing, relaxation. Most of these errors we don't have to deal with in classical uh, communication. So the situation looks quite dire. Is there any hope for long distance quantum computation? And we will see that quantum problems require quantum solutions. So join me in the next lesson where we will talk about how we can overcome these challenges.